Hey everybody, this video and the ones that follow are going to be a little bit different from what I've done in the past. Most of the videos that I've been doing lately have been on the FreeCAD uh, Path Workbench, the CAM tool in FreeCAD. And uh, I keep getting a lot of comments from people asking for more end-to-end -end examples uh, going all the way through the process so they can see how things fit into, uh, into context a little bit. And I've gone a little farther than that. Uh, I've put together a book called FreeCAD for Inventors. Uh, and it's oriented at new users to FreeCAD, uh, makers, hackers, inventors, people that, that have an idea and want to take their idea farther and actually make something with it. Um, and the book has uh, uh, about five different very practical examples of uh, different kinds of things and then uh, a number of chapters on using those models to generate g-code and do ray tracing and things like that. So I thought it would be interesting to take one of those models and parts of several different chapters and do them right here in a video so you can see an example of what kind of content is in the book but also learn a little bit about FreeCAD right here. So what are we going to do over the next couple of videos? Well, we're going to build Batman's Batarang. So if you want to learn about image planes and uh, sketching over an image and uh, uh, a little bit about the path workbench, we'll follow along for the next couple of videos and uh, let's go ahead and jump on into it. So I'm a terrible artist uh, when it comes to actually just drawing something from scratch and there's no way that I could uh, draw the profile for uh, a Batarang. Um, so, you know, a lot of uh, graphic applications let you import an image and then trace over it to get your basic shape and FreeCAD can do this as well. So let's uh, switch over to FreeCAD and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a new document and then switch to the uh, image workbench. This isn't one that we've used before. Uh, now I'm using version 17 and in version 17 there's only two icons on the toolbar and they unfortunately happen to have the same uh, icon. Uh, but if you hover over them it'll show you the tooltip. One says open the image view and the other says create a planar image. Uh, in the 3D space. And that's what we want to do. We want to create a planar image. And what this is going to do is make a, a, a surface or a, a plane oriented in 3D space that we can then attach the image to. And, uh, and then we can position the plane the way that we want it. So I've got an image that I created uh, I grabbed something off of uh, uh, the internet and I tweaked it a little bit uh, to make it work for my purposes. And I'm going to orient this. It's going to ask me how I want to position it and I'm going to choose the XY plane. Um, you can fine tune this and you can actually position the, uh, uh, the image on any plane that you would want. But primarily you're going to want to choose one of the, the, the primary planes, uh, you know, like a, a front on or a top down view. So in this case we're going to be looking down on the Batarang from the top as though it were laying on a table. I'll say OK and it will ask me to, uh, um, so I pick the image and it comes up black and, and I can zoom out and you can see now that if I like pan around, it's I'm panning around a plane and my image is kind of attached to it and that's what we want. So the next thing is to get your image the right size and, uh, um, and that means scaling the image to a particular size and this is not something that FreeCAD can do natively but there's a very uh, useful, uh, very handy macro that has been written and is available from the add-on installer and uh, so we're going to use that. So if you go under Tools, Add-on Manager and switch to Macros I have a very slow internet here so it'll take a second to populate and scroll down to uh, the eyes it's called image scaling and I'll update that or install it and it's now installed and the way that the macro works is you pick two points on the image and then you tell it how far apart those two points should be and it will scale the image to match that. So what I want for uh, this model is I want it to be about six inches from point to point, from tip to tip. Now the image scaling uh, macro has a limitation. Uh, only light, unlike the rest of FreeCAD where you can 
enter in an expression. Uh, you could enter in, if I'm working in metric and I want it to be six inches, I could enter in, you know, six IN or six times 25.4 or something like that. I can't do that uh, in here. So I, I actually have to figure it out ahead of time, um, you know, the dimensions that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and run the macro and I do that from the macro uh, button here to execute and it it comes in under a different name than it was installed. Uh, you actually scroll down to the M's and it's macro image scaling right here. So we'll execute that and uh, my software for recording videos has a little bit of a goofy thing and it puts my uh, uh, inputs behind the screen so I have to pull down here. So it's asking me to select the first point. So if I select the end here and then the second point and you'll see it's dragging a red line and select approximately uh, there and then it asks me to select the image plane and type in the distance and so you actually have to select the image plane object in the tree and then enter in the distance and it's going to be 154.4 uh, millimeters which works out to six inches okay so it now scaled my image and uh, um, so if I were to use the, uh, just to prove that we got this right, if I'm going to use the tape measure and measure from point to point, it shows me at about 154. I wasn't exactly on the, the tips, so the image is scaled correctly now. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to position the image um, so it's, it's aligned to the uh, uh, coordinate system that we're working on. Uh, it just, it'll make things easier since what we want to do with an image like this where you've got some natural symmetry, symmetry in the object that you're, you're modeling, it doesn't make sense to model the whole thing. It makes sense to model half of it and then create the other half by mirroring. That way the two sides are identical and any changes that need to be made can be made in one place and they'll update automatically. So we want to model half of this, which means that the center of the Batarang image needs to be positioned directly on the coordinate system. Well, how do we do that? Well, let's switch over to the part design workbench, and I'm going to create a body and create a sketch. And it will ask me which plane to sketch on, and, uh, and we want the, the sketch of, or the plane of the sketch to match the sketch the plane of the image. So it's going to be the XY plane again in this case. Now if you were modeling something like a face or, or some other object that you were viewing on the uh, YZ plane um, or XZ plane then you'd, you'd choose that to match as well. It just matters that, that the sketch plane and the image plane are the same. So I'm choosing the XY plane and it'll give me my uh, coordinate here and if I zoom in you'll see that it's close, but my image is not really, the center line is not on the axis. So that's easy to fix. Um, I'm going to leave the sketch task open and just switch back over to the model view here. And I'm going to select my image plane and I'm going to open up the, the uh, on the data tab, I'm opening up the placement and the position coordinates here. And I can just change the coordinates of the in the X direction to move the model and I just want this to be um, the, the basically the bottom tip to be right on the line and uh, so one is too much and zero is too little so let's go to 0 0.75 that's pretty good uh, at least here the image isn't even symmetric itself but we're only going to do a rough sketch and so you can see we're we're about in the, in the middle there and you can do the same thing if your, uh, your x-axis center line, so we, we're, we're zeroed on the y-axis here. If your x-axis was important to position at a certain point, uh, you, could, you could move the up and down as well the same way. In my case, I kind of want the origin of the coordinate system to be near the middle of the model. So I, I'll just leave it where it is right now. 
and uh, so I can switch back to my task view and right now the image is ready to sketch over so anything that I sketch is going to be correctly scaled and correctly positioned relative to the image so that's how you set up an image for modeling uh, in the next part I'm gonna uh, actually run the uh, uh, start sketching the outline of the side here and for the half model and then we'll mirror it to finish it